Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome back to Build the Titanic, episode 11. Uh, this one, we're going to be putting the well deck on um, and getting them mounted so that they are removable for RC purposes. Um, I'm doing this with uh, some screws, kind of similar to uh, Model Boat Guy, if, if you've watched his. Um, and then we're going to be doing uh, some work on the well deck um, on the aft side, or um, not the, yeah, on the the stern side um so we're going to be working on the um on the uh well deck on that and getting the poop deck attached so it all comes off in one piece so let's get started and here we go okay so i just painted the um deck uh black i did this one and the um the forward well deck so i have them both and what i'm planning on doing is actually very similar to Robbie model boat guy. I'm not going to go in and really show all of that into much detail because he does a pretty decent job with that, showing that. So um, I liked his idea and uh, it worked pretty well. But what I'm going to end up doing is um, joining the Folkstall deck up here to this deck and we're going to glue in a piece down here and then i'm using these which i picked up on amazon um, they're threaded inserts and they will simply screw in then up here um, i'll probably make two screw points back here a couple right here and then again this will be joined to the poop deck so I'm going to get started on that and we'll be back. Okay, so what we're doing now, as you can see, I've epoxied the um, brass uh, threaded fittings in. And this is for the uh, forward deck. I was originally going to do it up at the front. The problem with the front, sorry about not having a stand here when I'm doing this. The problem with the front, doing it up here, where I originally tried, is the angle of the uh, forward uh, area there. So the screw would not go in straight. And the other problem that I'm finding is the hull separates a little bit. So you can see that little bit of distance right there. So where I put these, we'll actually draw that in. And it's not gonna be perfect, but I can run a little bit of my, my um, anti-lighting uh, um, putty down along the bottom there and then these can screw in so I'm going to lift this off and get my mark for where I want my hole to be which is right there on that side and then over here just double checking my measurement a second Yeah, that should work. Then over here, I can see it right down there. So I want it to be right here, essentially. Oh, a little bit forward. I'm trying to do it with the camera in my hand too. A little bit more yet. All right, so I'm going to drill those out and then we're going to try screwing it down and see how that works. Okay, so the first one is screwed down, as you can see, um, no issue. And there is the gap there, but this screw will pull it down solid and I don't have my stand here to kind of show it, but I'm going to go ahead and screw that down and then I'll show you what the result is. Okay, so now they're both screwed down and I'm giving it some pressure. You can see there is no more give, so it's pretty much right where I need it to be. Up here, there's just a slight amount of give. Not very much, but uh, I think that'll be okay. So I feel pretty confident in what we got going on here. And this is solid. I mean, it's it's not going to move around. Um, 
I'll put a little bit of the uh, anti-lighting stuff along the bottom here, like I said, underneath the uh, bulk work, and um, we should be good. So from that point, I'll be able to unscrew this and then start building onto the well deck and putting my folk stole on that so I can join the two together. Um, up here, I'm also going to put a, um, a screw to kind of hold that as well. I originally thought about doing a piece of plastic, kind of like uh, Robbie did from Model Boat Guy, but with the China 3D part there, I think I'm just going to put a small piece of styrene sideways and then put my um, put my uh, threaded. Um, I'm trying to pull one out right now. My threaded piece right there so that it basically will screw right down on to it so let me cut that out a minute and start putting that together and we'll see how that ends up okay so here i am with the scale decks now my high detail pieces which is this one i had a small problem and spilled a little bit of thinner and it dribbled on there that's not going to be that big of an issue luckily thank god it didn't happen to anybody or anywhere bigger um, because I can use the box fit detail piece on here, um, and it should be very minimal noticeable, or very minimally noticeable, because really all I have is the bollards that are there. Um, now, I already got my, my stern piece here, and what we're going to do is fit them down you can see also i have my holes drilled for the um part to go onto the uh onto the uh hull there and that actually is fitting very 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 well so i'm happy with that so what we're going to do is go ahead and just cut along our markings here it's almost like a sprue kind of i guess you'd say not really but similar and this is also the blade that i use to um, cut my detail bollards off of the trumpeter decking um did slightly bend it but i have another one so i'm just using that to um cut these off now one piece to note is the um the poop deck um uh, docking bridge piece is right in here in between there um so you don't want to lose that okay and i did spray these with a uh, flat varnish already so that's already completed that helps them um, obviously not absorb any uh, chemicals like I did there. Unfortunately, that happened before I sprayed. So, should not be that big of a deal. We'll make it work, and it should be minimal that it's noticed. So, there we go. I want to do a test fit over this just to kind of see how we're looking. Sometimes you do have to do a little bit of trimming around edges with scale decks. Um, I've used them on many builds. And they really do. They just make a incredibly better uh, model when it's all said and done. But yeah, this is going on very nicely. The fit is good. No real issues. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. What we're going to do then is pull it back off carefully and put down some, um, some Gorilla wood glue. So, I go straight. Some people, uh, some people thin it out. Um, 
I've just found straight glue has worked pretty darn good in previous builds. So once this goes on, we are officially starting to build the uh, main parts of the kit at that point, which will be kind of exciting. Okay, gotta get that off of that cargo hatch there. They are black. I know I've seen people do them in the... Uh, the brownish maroon. Um, most pictures I have seen, they look black. So mine will be black, as I believe that's what they were. All right, next up, I just want to spread this around a little bit. And generally for that, I'm just using a, uh, a toothpick. They, they do well for that. Got a little piece of plastic in there. So you want to try to get it as smooth as you possibly can on here. Obviously you need some some uh, thickness otherwise it won't adhere but uh, you don't want it to be too thick either. either. Sometimes I just use my finger for this too but uh, Right now I'm trying to do it with the toothpick as much as possible. I might spread that around a little bit more with my finger in a second here. It's a little thicker than I want it to be. But I might need more over on this side. Really want to make sure you get your edging pretty good. Because that is, if it is going to fail, the edges are where it will fail. Yeah, more than I need. So, spread it out again a little bit more. Spread it through here, which it fits pretty tight in here already. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put that on, then we'll do some clamp down with it. Try to be careful to not get any to come through. Um, sometimes it will slightly, but this is water-based glue, so you can pretty much wipe it off, which is good. Okay, now 
try not to get that shiny glue look on it. So, just gotta wipe it basically till it's clear. And that really will about do it. I'm gonna clamp it down um, just to dry. But that is basically what you do. Sorry, I'm just moving it around, making sure I don't have any glue kind of showing up on the deck. And that looks pretty darn good. So, um, clamp it down. I use my popsicle sticks and a clamp. That's basically it. So I'll put it in three or four locations and uh, get it tightened down. So I'm going to go ahead and do the, um, the forward deck a while. And then uh, when we come back, um, I'm going to paint the, uh, the inner bulk works that go in here. And those are China 3D that I'm using. But I'll also paint behind them. That way, anything that's seen on the kit will be um, will be kind of not masked, but um, painted, so it should not be visible. Sorry, I'm just moving something to get a clamp out. But yeah, essentially, that is it with the first scale deck so um for these i'm going to break them in half and put one here now there's a little piece that sticks up right there so you got to avoid that There we go. So, I will be back after I get the other one done, and we'll go from there. Okay, as you can see, the poop deck here, I have painted black. Um, it's drying, so it's still a little bit shiny, but uh, I'm holding it from the bottom. So, that's drying right now, and you notice I cut all the um, detail off. Um, it's actually smoother than it looks. So the main concern there is that the scale decks will adhere. Um, so they look pretty decent. I've been working on this, cutting all the detail off of this. And uh, what I've been doing, basically, I, I might go back over the uh, poop deck again one more time and sand it. But I'm just grinding it down off. So again, the biggest thing is making sure that you are cutting everything that's going to fit in there. Now you say, uh-oh, where is your uh, cargo hatch? I have the 3D, China 3D print one, so um, this has to get cut off. So anyway, working on that, get this smoothed down. And um, like I said, I'll probably end up sanding it a little bit and go back over and do the poop deck also, um, just to get it a little bit more smooth. But all in all, coming off pretty easy, um, nothing too difficult, and basically it's just about getting it flat. So. so there you can kind of see what I'm going for is just getting it smooth. So the decks fit over it and once the plastic melts you can almost just break it away so the only piece that really sticks up still is uh this little uh little box right here that you got to keep because that will go through the deck
one other important point to mention is wear eye protection. Um, you definitely will get pieces of uh, plastic in your eyes and everywhere else, so highly recommended. <laughs> All right, that'll about do that. So now I'm just gonna sand it up and uh, paint it black and we'll be ready to adhere our scale decks to both of these. Okay, so I just hit that with some uh, 200 grit sandpaper. It's a lot smoother now. Um, again, it probably doesn't look it, but I'm running my finger right across it and not really having any issues. You can still feel the deck grain in a little bit, but um, I'd say it's pretty well ready to paint. So we're gonna go ahead and paint that black. Be right back. Okay, so those are dry. We're going to go ahead and uh, put down our scale decks, which um, this is the exact same process as what we just followed, but I'll video it anyhow, just in case there's anything that comes up worth noting or seeing. So again, we're using the high detail. Just cutting away the pieces here from okay. and that fits pretty darn good so no issues there everything is lining up feels nice and smooth underneath so this is going to be a nice easy one, just basically putting the glue on and sticking it down. So again, I'm trying to get make sure I get enough by the edges there to not cause any issues. In the future, one thing I will recommend, if you have a dehumidifier, when this is drying, use it. Um, I didn't have mine on for a few minutes with the first set and uh, I was seeing some lifting. So once I turned that on, I didn't have any issues, but uh, Humidity, especially during the gluing phase, is not your friend. And here on a rainy day, it is kind of humid. Just basically are plopping it down, getting everything lined up. I'll just do the same thing with uh, my popsicle sticks as before with uh, clamps. On the other underside, I do already have these um, glued down, which are uh, going to be basically to attach it to the um, 
to the uh, V deck. Well, the well deck, I'm sorry. V deck. Do, 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 do. One more. Okay, I'm just gonna let that sit and we'll go ahead and get the other side prepped. So be right back. Okay, I didn't show the doors on um, on the uh, stern well deck, but these are the, um, the China 3D print doors, which basically you're just popping them off and gluing them on. So I didn't actually vid bother videoing it just because uh, there wasn't really anything too exciting on that. Um, they're very easy to do, just basically CA glue and you are there. Um, the next part though is the, um, I guess it'd be like a spouting for the um, water basically. And this comes as a piece of rod on the KA set. So I'm basically just going to kind of figure out where I need to make the bend because you need to make a 90 and then you have to make another bend following that. So all we're going to do is kind of come right along right there. And I don't want to make it too harsh of a bend, but I don't want to make it too little either. So this measures out to be 55 millimeters, that's what they call for. Um, and this comes in your little bag of uh, brass rods, so you do have to cut it to your size. Uh, to do that, basically, all I did was take a micrometer and measure out 55 millimeter. So, nothing real overly difficult. Now, I need a little bit more bend yet. Should almost get me there. Yep, a little bit more. That might be too much. All right, that should be perfect. So we're gonna come basically right along there and then it bends down the other direction, another 90 right here. And it might be just a hair too long um, I did measure it, but, uh, it does appear that it's going to be just a smidge long. So, no worries, I'll just cut it off. Yeah, about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch maybe. Okay, the other side... Um, the stern basically does not have a whole lot of detail. It's just a couple doors, um, but this one does definitely run some more detail, so I figured it was worthwhile to film it. Now, I had made my bend a little bit shy there, so I'm just trying to correct that now. Okay, I got about the right length there, I mean the right point of bend, it needs a little bit more bending, and then a little bit more shortening. Okay, and then they are attached with two pieces of brass, again from the KA kit, which are um, Q21, I believe it is. So I gotta pull that out in a second here. But yeah, that that will work. So I'm gonna take a little bit of KA, or I mean C A. Too many initials. Way too many initials. And just run it along the length of the piece here.
and we're just going to put that on essentially following where the kit had a small embossing of it okay so we got that on It's not perfect on that ceiling up there, but you're never ever going to be able to get your head in there to see that, so I'm not all that concerned right now with that. The one thing I do want to figure out is this ladder situation, because um, it does not come with a ladder. i got to look around and see if I have any pieces of ladder that are going to work for that, because you can see it is there. But uh, I'd rather have a brass ladder if I can find one. So I gotta check around in my stash here, but let me get back to the page that has this well deck on it. Because then we have some other detail parts that need to go on here. And I did start to paint, um, and then I realized that there was the brass that went on it. So the brass and the 3D print so I kind of stopped and uh, did a correction. All right, so sorry, I had this out just a couple minutes ago and started looking for another piece and uh, lost my page. So. Oh, there it is. That was the second one I looked at. All right, so we also have all of the details here along those little two portholes, and then there's some, uh, I guess they're probably valve reliefs that go on there. So we need them, and we need uh, the Q21 piece for that piping, which is the page I'm actually looking for so what I really need to do is put these in some kind of page order that would make life a little bit easier watch it be on the back nope it's not on the back Okay, well, let me find that a minute, and then I'll come back here, and we'll start doing these couple little pieces right here. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so I did finally find my direction. So, what you'll see here is Q21, um, and there's two of them. So, obviously, once the pipe is on the hull, it's going to be harder to see. So, what I did was take another piece of brass... And I already did one of them, but I figured it'd be worth demonstrating this because I've seen questions on this on a few of the different Facebook groups on how to do these. So, like I said, I already showed how we bend it. Um, but then our next step is to make it fly off into oblivion. Uh, they give you a few extra, so uh, I lost that one. Um... But anyway, I'm going to show what I'm doing to bend it, and uh, it seems to be working okay. Um, the brass is actually very thin, so it's pretty easy to work with. So let me just cut a piece off. And these are very tiny very 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 tiny I got one right there and the one I just cut off right here so I don't even know if you can see it but all I'm doing is putting it over that piece of rod 
which is about the same size of the one that we're using, which is 0.5 mil. Okay. So I got that over there. And it's still stuck to my finger. There we go. And I want to get it pretty well in the center, which is about right there. And now I'm just taking my fingernail on both sides and bending it so I got kind of a shape that will go over the piping. So I'm going to try to show that. It, it is extremely tiny, but there you go. So you get a close-up of my hand too. But now we're going to go ahead and install that onto the, um, onto the uh, pipe that's there. And then that section will be done. So we're going to take our tweezer and first before I'm going to dip my CA, I'm going to put a little dip, drop, whatever you want to call it, of CA on my piece of pipe here. Not very much, just enough to hold this little piece on here. And then we're going to take that and drop it on right there. Okay. And that got what I wanted done. So that's good. Now let me do the other one which goes in between those two doors that are next to each other. So we're gonna put those on, grab our piece. All right, there we go. So we got that. All right, now, looking at honor and glory, I'm seeing a door right here. I do have an extra door that I can put there, so I am going to do that. Um, what I've been doing with these, because I'm finding that they're actually quite easy to work with, is just a little pull here with the tweezer, and it pops right off for me. Um, get a tiny bit of sprue left over on the back that really you can just take off with your fingernail. So nothing major there. So that was easy. And then a dip in RCA. And then we're just going to put it in place. Now the KA kit does not show this door here. Um, Ship Magnificent, it is on the plan. So I'm going to go with that over KA and Trumpeter just because uh, I think they're more accurate. Now we do have two steps that go here and one here and one here. So I'm going to wait until we actually put the put this onto the deck after we paint. So next up, we go back and we have our little details here, which are A7 and D35 and C18. So I have C out right now because um, I needed that for another piece. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that one off a minute. C18 should basically just be two round little holes. These are numbered and they're pretty close to in order, but here and there I find ones that are just slightly out of order. So I see C81, not 18. Um, That's calling 18 right there. Which does not look right. And 
And it's not even a bending type action. I want to look a little bit closer to figure out what that is because that may be actually a stanchion on the deck rather than the porthole lid. It looked like a porthole lid, but I don't think it is now that I'm looking closer. So let me get the other pieces and I'll come back to that one and clarify. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I got those on and they are supposed to be just over to the um, starboard side a bit. So they are on, and now we're going to put the portholes on, which are um, number A7. So we got our two little portholes right there. Got one off. Okay. They are tiny. They are very tiny. Uh, one thing I'd recommend too with the um, KA Photo Etch, they sent these nice little plastic envelopes that everything comes in. Um, highly recommend keeping them back in there so nothing gets damaged as you're going here. Um, as you're probably seeing, the farther you go in this kit, it can get really easy to kind of lose sight of where parts are and what you got going on. So how I'm planning to do these is just dip some KA, I'm um, sorry, CA um, on my toothpick here and put that around the porthole. And then I plan on just dropping the porthole into it, which I think is going to work. go and just for good measure I'm gonna go one more thing around there and these portholes are extremely small and extremely delicate, so when you're doing it, be very careful. Here we go. Now the only thing I don't like, when I just did that, I filled that first porthole with a little bit of CA glue, so I'm just gonna poke through it real quick while it's still soft. There we go. And that will do it. Got one more door to put on, and this will be ready. Okay, so I just mixed up my Weldeck Orange, and that is made from Orange uh, 71083, and more of a base color of um, Oxide Anna Hirondo or something, something along those lines, which is 71130. Um, mostly this with just a couple drops of this. So that is what I'm going to go with. I like it. I think it's pretty close um, to what I envision is accurate anyway. So we're going to go ahead and spray that on the side of the uh, bulk works and the, um, the base of the uh, folk stole here. So I'm, if, if it turns out good, I'm obviously going to mix up more and put it in a bottle so that uh, I have it for future as we go here. So let me go ahead and spray this and uh, we'll see how this looks. Okay, so the great part about where we're at now, um, it starts to be kind of like in modules um, that you can actually work on it. So I don't have to have the entire ship sitting here as I'm working on it. You can see now I am attached down the bottom. Um, it's solid, it's not going anywhere. So that will lift up in one panel. Got my uh, orange down there, um, as you can see. I still need to put my window frames down there, um, kind of forgot them, but I can still get in there, so it won't be too big of a deal. And I need to run some lighting because I do want a light underneath there. Um, but basically I'm going to uh, kind of drop it in from the back 
so I'll drill a hole in there and then uh, that will be there so we're gonna use a nano light I'll show you that once uh, we get to that point um, let's see other than that it's about time to start some of the cargo hatches so these are the China 3d cargo hatches um, these would be the fronts these are the rears so I'm going to just break them in half and the good thing is these are large pieces so I don't have a lot of concern with them breaking um, generally I would use a uh, hot knife on um, 3d print but uh, like I said these are just basically coming right off so no big deal there now one of them and it might end up actually no it's going to be the forward one um, I'm going to end up uh, putting a charger in a charging port so that will be a magnetic liftoff um, so when we get to that I'll show that whole aspect now all of these sprue attachment points are on the bottom and the inside so nothing real major there just gonna basically drop that in right there and we'll get it painted up first obviously but uh there we go that kind of gives us a look of that and we'll get the other one off quick and that one also butts up against the wall so it won't be seen where the sprues are but they're peeling right off no big deal and leftover pieces I can actually just get right off with my finger so Oops, very easy. And that one goes right there. So I'm going to get ready to go ahead and paint these up. And we will go ahead next and probably put our, uh, our 3D print bulk works in um, for both sides. So I got them painted up our, our um, what is this called, orange rust. So there they are, and uh, I think the color is pretty, pretty good. I like it. Um, I did not end up going with what I originally said. I got rid of that brighter orange that was in there. It, it just made it too bright, almost a reddish look. So um, I went back to just the standard uh, uh, orange rust. So that is what I will be remaining with. So. I'm going to go ahead and get these painted up. I know there's a little bit of a debate on the hatch covers. Um, some people say that they're the uh, orange well deck color underneath. I believe they're black from the pictures that I've seen, so my model will be black. Um, and they already are black, so there we go. But we're going to paint the tops of these kind of a white, um, a whitish shade. And then all the detail along the bottom here, they have these um, hold down bolts or ties. I gotta look at that to see if they were tied or bolted, but these look more like a bolt type situation. Um, so I want to look back at Ship Magnificent before I go and actually paint this, or I might just go take a tour on uh, Titanic Honor and Glory quick to take a look at what they got going. But anyway, um, I'm excited. This is a big, big step in it. Um, the lighting that I was just talking about. So I'll essentially show how I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do it right now on the camera. I will do plenty of other lighting, but this is going to be a little bit more challenging because I missed it when I should have put it in. So what I'm using are nano lights. And you can get these for like, I don't know, 10 for, 10 for $10, something like that on eBay. Like, I buy a lot of these um, so basically I will end up CA gluing the light itself to the ceiling underneath there and then it will go back underneath kind of like that so essentially right there is where it's going to end up um, under that cargo crane and the cargo cranes have a small light on them too so that's going to get drilled out and uh, illuminated I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use fiber optic on that or if I'm going to use an LED. I, I want to look and kind of see how bright they really should be, but um, they uh, 
They also are the China 3D. I did the first coat of paint on them last night. So they will go probably right about there. That one will be. And a light should be right in that neighborhood. So, yeah, like I said, I'm going to figure out which uh, which way I want to go. If I want to just do fiber optic or if I want to do the, um, the lighting. But either way, I will show it when it comes time. So, yeah, I don't want to get ahead of myself too far. Um, these will have to get painted up, obviously, before I put them on. And that will probably still be in this video because I want to try to get the well duct pretty much set and done. Obviously, I'm not going to do anything with the poop duct, really. Well, I might because I want to get that light in. So the cargo crane might end up being in. But let me go ahead and paint these up. Um, I'm going to get these put on here shortly. I'll probably film that part. And um, I got a bunch of machinery. It has to go down in here and all that good stuff, which is also all China 3D. So need to look at the uh, maps of which pieces are which and um, start getting ready to do that part. So we'll be back. Okay, so I started doing some of the wiring for the uh, for the poop deck area. So I want a light here and here, which is underneath, as you can see. And then I want my lights that go into the um, the uh, crane bases. So they are right there. Now I don't have them attached really, aside from tape. So I'll be able to move them um, when I go to mount my uh, lights but I wanted to get them wired anyway so what I'm gonna do um, because none of the aftermarket kits that I saw anyway have the roof um, beams on the uh, poop deck area here where it sticks out I got this I-beam here which is railroad I-beam um, model railroad and you can get slightly smaller. I, I, I probably got just a little bit too big, but I think it'll work okay. Um, and we're going to put that on the bottom here. And basically, just measuring it, it looks like I need almost three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to cut my first one, make sure that's right. And then I will... Uh, Cut more from there and like I said these might not be perfect to scale um, but they're gonna give me the effect that I'm looking for that is a little long yet and uh, it will it'll be better than just a flat roof that it currently is not to mention if I do it right I'll be able to kind of hide the uh, wire for the lighting as well. So now that I got my size, hopefully, just a hair short, shorter, then I will just cut a bunch more and set them along inside here all right so that is my size so i'm gonna go ahead and cut these and then i'll get them glued down and uh i'll be right back okay so there we go i got my eye beams in um they're gonna give the effect that i'm looking for um let me try to find the deck real quick so it's a very slight effect when it comes down to it but uh it it's definitely added detail I guess that's the best word for it so I'm gonna paint them up and then um, there's columns that I need to put in here too so I believe there's three of them that come down um, so I'm gonna hit that up next and uh, we'll be right back okay so um, as I was going I, uh, I realized my upper cranes were supposed to be white and I know I didn't update this but there we go I did some I beams along the bottom here which I think I showed a little bit ago um, put the poles in and uh, basically redid those windows those portholes because I wasn't happy with them um, but I'm a lot happier now so I do have my light in here and it's run my initial plan was to put lighting into the cranes 
Um, however, I changed my mind and I'm going to actually run fiber optic. So I'll show what we're going to do for that here in a minute. Um, but I'm waiting for it to dry. The other thing I realized as I was, uh, as I set this the first time, um, I'm getting light bleed through already on that deck where it meets. So I'm going to use some of the, uh, model railroading, uh, anti-light stuff that I showed in a previous video. Um, this stuff's made by Woodland Scenics and it works really nice because I can just basically run it right along the edging where the deck will meet the wall here. And uh, you can make it as thick or thin as you want and it's extremely sticky. So this stuff will work fantastic for uh, this application. So I'm just gonna kinda run it along the edge of the wall here and then it will conform down to the deck once, uh, once it's ready to set. <clears throat> so this stuff is almost like a tar consistency I guess that would be the best way to explain it but uh, it will do the job quite nicely and uh, kill any light bleed that we'll have coming up from the lower lower parts of the ship so I'll get that on and then as I wait for the cranes to dry um, you can see I got some winches and not winches but uh, ventilating units already set um, that go under the poop deck so they are where they need to be and yeah that pretty much is where we're at right now so the portholes while they are lit um, well I mean the holes are there for them to be lit so I may just run a fiber optic into the back of them um, I'm gonna play with that and kind of make a decision here in a second but basically what I'm thinking I'm going to end up doing with these cranes I'm gonna put the light inside of here and then uh, put the fiber optic out to the crane because it will pick up the light and I'll run this uh, light deadening stuff underneath it so that should take care of any issues that we might have with that and I probably got the light bleed here because I have pulled this off now three times unfortunately so I'm just gonna have to kind of deal with it unfortunately but it is what it is so um, I'm gonna go ahead and paint some winches uh, that go on here and the bollards that go on here which are all China 3d um, I'm going to use the uh, deck um, lighting, uh, what do you call it, uh, enclosures, um, because this piece of fiber optic fits in here just perfect, and that will be basically the light for our crane. That will also help make it not quite as bright, because uh, I, I don't want it to be overly bright. Um, what else? Oh, I put the window frames on and added some uh, acetate behind there so you should be able to see a little bit of a, uh, a shine when the light hits it right I don't know if there you can kind of see it so those are there and yeah I'm pretty happy with how this is coming so far there are two holes behind these doors um, right there I don't know if that'll focus in enough uh, I thought about drilling them, but I don't know, I'd need a very long bit to get in there, and I don't think I have one that's long enough to, to do the job that I would need it to do without damaging other stuff. Yeah, just shy. So, I'm gonna have to probably live with them. But, anyway, that's a quick update. Um, I'm going to kind of clean this up a little bit where the, uh, where the crane was attached 
and then as soon as they get dried we'll uh we'll go ahead and attach them okay so i'm taping up uh the um what do you call it the uh crane bases for the well deck here and one thing i just uh figured i'd kind of mention to try to help avoid getting any kind of um marks on white paint i use these little finger things they uh they actually do a great job um in keeping your stuff clean so just wanted to kind of show them because i don't think i've ever really shown them um but basically all we're doing right now is taping this off so that we can do our orange down on the base part of of the um of the crane and then uh, this side doesn't get seen at all, so I'm not that worried about it um, because it's right up against flush to the deck wall, which uh, I do already have painted, and that turned out very nice. So my first wall I'm not overly happy with, which is this one. Luckily, most of it is kind of hidden under the deck, but this one turned out a lot more sharp. I got a little touch-up to do right there, but uh, my lines turned out better, and... Um, I'm real happy with it so that guy sits right here I gotta drill my holes yet for my um, for my lighting but uh, essentially that's what we got going on so like I said you can't really see that wall at all so I'm not going crazy about trying to get that perfect um, then once the orange is dry I will uh, I will then cover it with um, with the uh, gray on the top so i just got the gray done on these um the clear coat that i'm using is drying i was originally using a humbrol clear coat um it's like 17 dollars a bottle i found this uh which is rust-oleum clear dead flat and this stuff is amazing um for the couple dollars that it cost it was like six dollars uh i think i got it at walmart but um really 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 happy with this so the humbrol stuff is nice but you get a can about that big for twelve dollars versus that for six dollars so kind of a no-brainer um and it's reacting perfectly fine to the paint so i like it highly suggest it you know uh rust rust-oleum universal clear dead flat so anyway um let me get back onto it and uh we'll come back here when uh we're ready to do the next phase okay so i got that done with uh painting the tops here i went ahead and drilled out my hole um i went with a 0.75 so you can get rolls of um fiber optic from the fiber optic store uh that's where i bought this this is a one millimeter i'm going with a 0.75 because my um, brass br brass bezels are point um, point seven five, so kind of locked in on that end because uh, I want my I want my um, lighting to be able to fit through these holes. And I went back up and looked at my Lusitania model and my Queen Mary model um, that both are heavily lit and both of them i used fiber optics for the deck lighting so i'm going to end up doing that again and um these these will fit and work um so the good thing with fiber optic um when it is lit i don't know how much you'll be able to see oh well, yeah you can so there's the end right there when i put my finger over it it does not light up it's so hard to see it and it probably doesn't help that i have these glove things on so let's go to try that okay lit not lit lit and it gets brighter there we go lit not lit lit not lit lit not lit and all I'm doing is moving my finger over top of it. So it will draw the light from the strand. So what I'm doing is running the fiber optic down through the hole that I had initially put for um, the light. And then I drilled another hole into this deck here. 
and that will go straight down into the hull. So it will pick up light from down in the hull and uh, then transfer that light out to the um, out to the hull or out to the uh, crane. So I only need probably about three, four inches. Um, the one thing I'm going to say with fiber optic that is important to be noted, uh, it does not react well to um, CA glue. So I'm going to put my, um, my bezel on first, and then I'm going to go back and CA glue it I'm sorry, not CA glue, but use canopy glue to uh, attach the um, the fiber optic. And the good thing about this, it won't be overwhelmingly bright, but it'll still be bright enough to get the effect that I'm looking for because these shouldn't be spotlights. They really would be a simple light bulb, um, which in 1912 was not bright. And how I do this with the fiber optic, um, it'll give it the appearance that there's a like a glass dome over top of it, and I'll show that in a minute once we get there. So need to uh, Need to file just a tiny bit on that. I dropped it. Where did I drop it? Okay. This is the hard part with the brass. The small, small brass. Luckily there's a ton of them. And these are part of the KA kit for anybody that's using KA and wants to follow the same method. Okay. So, got to be a little bit more careful this time. I'm going to try to do it without filing, just basically trimming. That should work. So I'm gonna get a little blotch of CA. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the uh, with the windows. Well, I didn't show that part, but the windows down in the uh, bottom deck there. And that was just basically toothpick it with some CA on the end. Okay. And now we're just going to take our tweezer. There we go. So now that is on. We'll give that a minute to set up. And it gives me the brass trim ring that I wanted too. So now, I was hoping it was going to just simply pass through, but it did not. All right, so we're going to try another method. We're going to use some canopy glue. Sorry, I'm reaching here. Do 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 canopy glue 
then I'm going to try the same sort of thing. Oh. It poured way too much. Okay, now what I'm going to do this time is cover that. Then I'm going to pull my fiber optic into it. And canopy glue dries very clear. that hole out big enough because I redrilled the one but I guess I didn't the other that might have been our whole problem there we go no worries it'll work either way Just gonna pull that through. Now probably want about three inches essentially. So I'm gonna say right there we'll do it. And we're gonna cut. I'm gonna cut it right about here. Because what we're gonna do next is take a lighter and that will uh help to give us our globe effect, which I'll show you in a minute. Got to take out these supports in here just because I want to uh, put a little bit of canopy glue on the inside once we do this. So let me run my other one real quick. Um, since I did drill that one out, this one might work. Nope, no dice. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> it went in and then I dropped it. Okay. Well, it felt like it went in. Oh, whatever. It's on here now. Do the same thing with this one. And the canopy glue also. Uh, it does set up fairly quick, so you're not going to have to wait a ton of time for this to harden. I've also used this stuff to do windows um, in some ships. It does build up, like I said, clear and uh, dries clear, all that good stuff. That will be more than enough length right there. So let me just go grab a lighter and I will be right back. Okay, so we're gonna just get it close, not real close, because obviously I don't wanna burn the um, crane tower either, but it put a little bulb on there. You might be able to see it, how it melted. And then we're just gonna pull that in and now we have a light and there you go you can see it lit up closed or off lit up and they actually are fairly bright so that'll work do the other one real quick and this is actually how i'm going to end up doing my deck lighting too So, next up is going to be just feeding them down in through the hull here, or the, not the hull, the deck. 
and we should be about ready to glue now at this point too so um i got some scrap when i drilled and i've done this i've re put this on probably three times now like i said so that's why we're doing the build up of uh of this although I don't think it's a bad idea to have it anyway just because you never know so I'm just gonna kind of roll it so it's bigger than not bigger but higher than the um, than the wall so that way when we glue down it'll crush on and block any light that we would have coming through this also this method with the um the uh fiber optic will also prevent me from having to worry about the uh the crane towers leaking at all so i think all in all it's the right move so we're gonna go ahead and ca glue this on again and i'm actually quite impressed how well the ca glue held on this because I generally plastic to plastic will use a, a normal model glue um, but this actually set up very very well these are the points that it was touching the um, the ship oh got a drip Okay, so this one's going to go into that one. The other one I'll be able to drop straight down to. I already have done this, so. Okay. Now, because I've done this a couple times at this point, I am going to clamp it at least for a few minutes. Oh, between video shots, I also put bollards on, and uh, I got that one set in there, but it's not glued yet. Okay, so I'm going to let that set up for a few minutes, and then I'll glue down my um, my crane uh, towers. So, in the meantime, I can run some uh, anti-lighting stuff on, uh, on this wall here, which I don't know if it'll need it, but it really doesn't hurt, and I have a lot of this, so I have two rolls of that. And it's fairly cheap. And before we do that, I want to drill my holes. So, I do know that one actually should be above that door. Oh, on this deck, I also opted out of using the um, KA or the China 3D doors only because of the orange strip. Um, it's just a detail that I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze because I ended up with problems both on the uh, four deck and the um, and the Folkestyle deck and on the rear deck here so I'm going to opt to just uh, live with the trumpeter doors just for this particular wall. And I wish I would have with the other walls, honestly, just because it made the taping a whole lot more difficult. Okay, we're through. So here I'm going to do the exact same thing. 
and that's just put the brass ring around it and put a fiber optic piece through it and that will ride right there and I'll have them go down into a hole down in here which actually this is probably going to have a larger hole made anyway to get light through it um, haven't gotten that far yet but that will that will be how I do that so there's where we're at let me pause it we'll let this set up I'll get these other holes drilled out run the fiber optic may cut a hole here I haven't decided yet and then we'll we'll be back okay so this seems like a pretty good place to probably end the video for this episode so there you can see basically where we're at with the uh, well deck and poop deck I did start putting a couple bollards up um, only because I cut them off the wrong piece but that's okay um, so there we go it's uh, looking very good I'm really happy with it uh, I will say every single piece on the deck here is China 3d so that is available on the China 3d um, Facebook page so look that up I will have a link at the bottom um, down there if you're interested um, excellent stuff I mean just excellent detail I'm kind of zooming in there a little bit or bringing it in close anyway but you can really just see the amount of detail that has gone into it um, and how nice it really looks but um, did a couple little add-ons too you know I got the uh, fiber optics into the uh, deck lamps there and uh, they, they look really nice um, they look really good in the uh, in the um, crane bases as well um, I was going to start the crane base on or the crane uh, operating part on this uh, video but I decided to hold off so there they are but you can see the amount of detail on them and they even have the little hole on the railing right here hopefully that kind of focuses in um, there you can kind of see it so the string can come across to here and here for the railing um, just really well done but next video I'll be detailing these up putting you know making gray steps on there doing some work with the handrails and um, doing the uh, the uh, controls so they'll be in the next video um, I will mention with the weathering, yes, there will be some weathering. I have not done it yet. Um, the hull, obviously, I weathered pretty heavily. And my thought process is the deck probably would have been more of a fresh paint job before the, um, before the maiden voyage. So that is going to have a lot less weathering than what the hull had on it. Um, so anyway... That's kind of where I'm thinking and how I'm thinking. But uh, anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you on the channel so that uh, you get the updates as we continue to move. Um, and yeah, it's going to get better from here and more detail from here. So thank you very much for tuning in and we'll see you all next time.